So let's get started. Um, so we have a new member tonight, Jessica. Would you like to introduce yourself? Um, so I am... Now you're muted, Jessica. Sorry. <laughs> can you hear me now? We can hear you, Jessica. You just sound a little buzzy. Oh. That's so weird. Okay. Um, I have headphones. I don't know if that'll help, but can you sort of hear me? Yeah, we can kind of make out what you're saying, so probably okay. Um, so my name is Jessica Malmstra. Uh, I've been living in Middleton since 2019. We moved to the area in 2018. Um, uh, I got introduced to the Northern Arts community through Aaron. Um, actually, we met um, during a volunteer thing for the PTO. Um, my kiddo is at South Trail, so, uh, and um, I started doing art a couple years ago. Um, I've kind of done it throughout my life, but I guess more seriously a couple years ago. So I've been getting really into art and wanting to connect with the art community in my area more, so. What is your medium? Um, mostly, I just do um, like charcoal pencil and fluid pencil for now. I'm kind of like dipping my toe into acrylic, but yeah, I, I mostly do portraits. Okay. Well, welcome to our committee. Thanks. Does anybody have anything else? Any other questions or anything for Jessica? Um, this is Katie. I just want to say welcome, Jessica. I'm um, one of the alders on the council. Um, and I'm sure you have a really beautiful voice. It just sounds like you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try my headphones. Um, I think that should help. I apologize. I don't no know what problem. Is going on with my. Um... We can't help with what these machines want to do. Yeah. Is that better? There you go. Yes. Way better. Oh. Yay. Oh. oh. Now Apparently, we my computer decided to break. And That's the headphones. That happened with my old computer when the kids spilt something on the microphone. Like it never went back to normal. <laughs> yeah. My kids stay home for the summer. So that's probably 100% what happened. Like okay. jelly hands on the microphone. <laughs> yeah, they're always sticky. Mm -hmm. Hey, Michelle. Yeah. Can you back up it so we can approve the minutes? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. So any discussion about the minutes? Thanks, Meg. Yeah. I'm happy to move to approve them. Uh, I will second. This is Katie. All right. Okay, all in favor? we have that out of the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Jessica, or Julia has her hand raised. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say thanks to Jessica for volunteering um, at Celebration. It was really nice to meet you. It was really nice meeting you, too. Yeah, I think we had a really good turnout, so I just wanted to say thanks for her help. Awesome. And yeah. Julia just sent some pictures to everyone so you can see the table at the celebration if you haven't seen that yet. We could probably post some of those on our Facebook page too. Looks like it was fun. I think I have a couple that I need to send to Julia. I'll do that today. Okay, thanks. Okay, so shall we move on to item two of our agenda? Uh, update on the Youth Center project. The Youth Center project is in the library in the display case. Uh, it will be there the rest of July and August. It's been there since the beginning of July. Um, we are starting to plan for next year. The time will be the same. Um, Gabby at the Youth Center wants to keep the same time, which is the first Wednesday of the month and from 4 to 5 p.m. And so this year we're going to do some smaller projects, I think, because the project was a little bit 
arduous for the kids. <laughs> and so we need to um, plan out some things for the coming year so that we have a schedule for Gabby. Um, she would like to have that before school starts. Um, and so at the end of the year I, of this last session, I pulled the kids, asked them what they wanted to do. They want to do clay. They want to do tie dye. Um, they want to do just shorter things like maybe one or two um, hours. So anyway, I get, would like you guys to brainstorm some things for me and anyone who wants to volunteer for a day has an idea for a project or if you know someone um, who wants to become involved with that. We do have a budget. We cannot pay arts committee members, but we do have a budget to pay artists. Um, we have, how much is it, Meg? 1150 from the triangular door? I think it was 1350. 1350. So we have some money to work with for the Youth Center project. And for the new people who don't know, um, we started last year doing a, a project at the Youth Center and we, um, we did a project called Our City and the kids built buildings to represent things in Middleton. And uh, so we were going in once a month and went through all the phases of making these buildings. And um, so it's the, the youth center is in the middle school and it is fifth through eighth graders. And um, it's a varied group every, every time. It just depends on who feels like doing art that day. Um, so anyway, having said that, if you guys have any ideas, please email them to me or anyone that you know that might wanna might want to help out. I think that we should, we have nine sessions and I think we would should try to limit the amount that we're paying someone to a hundred or $150 for a session. Um, and try Is to that in addition, plus we would buy the materials. Yes. I mean, I think we should, honestly, I think we should keep it to a hundred a session and then the materials. Um, I don't ex anticipate that the materials will be that expensive if we're doing, you know, small projects. Okay. So last time um, Meg had suggested Emily Balsley, but I would guess that she's going to charge more than a hundred. <laughs> well, it's an hour session. I mean, it's, so I, I feel like, and we, I feel like we also need to stay within our budget. I'm trying, I'm, I really would like to uh, keep within that 1350 for the year. How many different sessions would it be, Michelle? There are nine total. I'll probably take one or two. Okay. And then if anyone else wants to volunteer and do a project, um, you know, hopefully we can get folks to volunteer too. One thing I think, well, I, I guess by reaching out to Emily, my thought was that she does summer camps with kids. So I, she might have some great ideas and we could just see what her rates are. Um, she also has a daughter. I think she's in high school though. So she's like really great with kids um, already. And what we could do is if like, I took a session, Michelle takes a session, Aaron takes a session, then maybe, and Julia and Jessica. So there's five artists. Um, then we could do, um, we need four more. Brian could take a session. Wait, <laughs> what? No. Artist. Hold it. <laughs> Cartooning. <laughs> what are you talking about, Brian? You're, you're volunteering. Yeah. But That's you know what I mean? Point. Okay, I'll take two. Cartooning but you know what I mean? is yeah. one of the then subjects that came I up. can take two. What about Maria? Oh, that's right. Mar yeah, Maria would do a paper workshop, I think, with them. And so then, like, maybe there's two sessions that we could hire Emily to come in and do, like, maybe a larger scale project. I still think that we don't want to go crazy with paying someone because it is a youth center project. It's not, you know, I mean. Yeah. I still think we need to, like, keep it within a certain limit. Are we going to be able to spend thirteen fifty between just the committee members? Do we have to? I mean, does it roll? Can it roll over? Oh, I don't know. 
Yeah, it's in, I put the, I had that deposited into the non-lapsing fund. Oh, so good. It won't expire. Okay. All right, that's good. Um, there's another artist that I want to throw out there as an option. Um, I've never met him myself, but I do follow him online. And I know he's doing some projects in Madison with, I think the Boys and Girls Club and it's peeled. Mm -hmm. His name is Terrence Adenayu, I think. Are you familiar with him? Anyone? Yeah. No. Yeah, by, I think I've seen him online. Yeah, he goes is by he on Instagram. Yes, he's on Instagram. Yeah. Um, what does he, he do? I think I follow him. So I I'm not entirely sure it's here. Hold on. I'll stop share and I'll see if I can pull him up. I still think he's going to be as much as like triangulator. We can't be affording no triangulator. Not this time. Speaking of which, my painting is framed and I can't wait to go and pick it up at Monroe, at Monroe Street. Mine is too. Yeah. I'll send you a picture. I'll send you one when I get it tomorrow. How many of you got one of his pieces? Did Abby get one? I did, and mine's framed too. Yay! Well, you got <laughs> awesome. Um, I would show it to you guys, but it's upstairs, so I would have to drag it downstairs. It's actually huge. I didn't realize how big it was. Yeah. Um, when is the youth event again? I'm sorry, what? When is the youth event? The youth center projects? Yeah. Mm -hmm. When is that supposed to be? They start in, um, we started, I think, in October last year, and they go till June. Okay, so the the artist that you're talking about to, um, to do, um, like, a session, that would start sometime in, um, you said August? October. October. Yeah, okay. so we didn't do the first month that school was in session, because everybody's trying to get into the swing. And um, so, yes, it's the first Wednesday of the month, 4 p.m. I, I think someone had mentioned in the email that they thought it would be like cool if I could do something with comic books with I kids. Did. Um, yeah, I think um, I would um, probably keep thinking about like what we could do with kids. Um, I would probably like to help with that. So cool. Thank you. That'd be yeah. awesome. That's and even if idea. I'm not leading, I'd be happy to volunteer for more than one just as Meg and I learned, sometimes you have glue problems and you really need all hands on deck, right? Do you all want to give me your preference month so that I can get a schedule together for Gabby? Just whatever sessions that you want to do. Tell me what you want to do and which month you want to do it. And then I'll get a schedule together and I'll send it to all of you before I send it to her so that we can make sure that everybody's all on the same page. And if there's a conflict, then we can sort that out. Sounds good. Michelle, can you tell me again, the, is it like what day of the month each time? First Wednesday of the month. First Wednesday, four to five. Four to five, uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, I might be able to um, volunteer to help. I don't, I don't have an art. <laughs> Well, you know, some of the things that they want to do are kind of, I think, are kind of simple. Like one of the things what they brought up was Sharpie alcohol painting. And so I was reading about that and it looks pretty easy, like something that could be done within an hour session. Um, so, you know, they had some ideas of their own and I, but, and I can, like, I can do the tie dye one mm. uh, or the clay. Um, so I just, you know, whatever you guys want to do though, if you have something specific in mind that you want to do, um, so I say it's an hour long, but really what happens is you kind of get started a little after four and then parents start coming to pick up their kids a little bit before five. And, you know, if you want to go a little bit longer, if you still have kids there, then they're okay with that too. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is it's essentially an hour. <laughs> I just thought of another person. Um, you guys know Chris Laufenberger? She's married to Paul Kinney. Oh, yeah. Hmm. Um, she teaches art classes out of her garage. I so, did not know that. 
Yeah, it's called Carriage House Arts. So she has a business. So we could reach up to her and see what her rates could be. And she actually has, she has wheels. I love it. They might be hard to move. We could inquire on it. She has like two potter wheels. No, she has three. Three wheels. I'm taking a clay class there right now. It's really fun. I was thinking more of like hand building. She like, do, She does that too. Because I think that would... Um, bringing the wheels in and all of and that all of that setting them up and everything would be really time consuming yeah I mean it could just be a hand class for sure but that's a good idea I I think that you know the kids want to do different things and I the more different things we can expose them to the better I think yeah I guess the reason that might, might be nice to work with her is she has a kiln in her basement so she could actually oh, fire cool. them, fire them fire them, so. wow you yeah. can buy self-drying clay too, and then you can paint it. Um, mm -hmm. So that could be like, that could also be like a two part session if we did clay. Mm -hmm. um, but and we you take the kids to her garage instead of, I mean, it's within easy walking distance. I don't know. I don't know if we can take the kids off site for the. Yeah, I don't think there'd be enough time to walk there after school and do pottery and get back okay. at five because I think the parents pick them up at five. Yeah, that's a good yeah. point. So, but we can, um, I can send her an email and just see what her rates might be so we know. Okay, well, why don't, why don't we first, before we start inquiring about rates, send me what you guys want to do and the dates so we can figure out how many we've got sorted out and what different things people want to do and then we can proceed on with reaching out. Okay. Okay. And then this is one option that I'm hoping to line up still for the summer fun, but um, obviously the architecture firm, like with that age of kids, if that would be of interest, you know, you wouldn't have to pay any of my coworkers. They could come in and do a modeling class or introductory, you know, sketching for architecture with concept design. I yeah. love that, Erin. I would, think you should do that. So I think cool. that would be fun. And I think the kids would like that, especially after like trying to build something <laughs> and yeah. realizing how hard it is. Um, and then I do have one other coworker that used to teach the um, like paint and sip classes. She came last summer for the pop-up, you know, down on the green and helped out with me. So she's really great with that. And it's something that you could accomplish within an hour that wouldn't be, you know, terribly overwhelming. So I will ask them and I will send you an email. That's great. One of the alcohol painting projects I found was coasters and you take a four by four tile and you do the um, Sharpie alcohol ink on it. You mask off wherever you don't want it to go if you're gonna do a design. And then you um, put self sticking cork on the back of it. Oh. And they are super cute. And I think those could be something we could get done in one session. Um, so I think, yeah, we, I think we can come up with a lot of ideas. Like I said, I'll take, I'll take a couple of them. And um, if you guys pitch in, then we can, I think we can come up with a good lineup of things for the kids this year. And I appreciate everyone's help. Thank you for being willing to volunteer for this. The kids really uh, enjoy the art projects. All right, well, that's all I had on that. I just wanted to like throw out the planning because we are almost end of July and school starts the end of August. So it'll be coming right up on us. Okay, uh, I don't think we don't have to vote on that. So next is a big event, the 2023 Art Walk and setting a date. Yeah, so I just put this on the agenda. Um for a couple of reasons. One being that the city has now hired our part-time downtown event coordinator and his name is Matt Strohsnyder. And he's um, he comes to us with quite a, a bit of an event experience ranging from a small bar that he worked at in Washington DC that held events 200 nights per week or 200 nights per year. Wow. Um, that he helped to plan and organize and he did their graphic design and social media to um, he worked for the congressional hunger um, 
I'm blanking on the name of the organization right now, but another organization, a large organization he worked for in DC where they organized a very, very large event for all the Congress women and men. Um, so he's great. He's hitting the ground running and he's met all the downtown business people and is working on um, organizing events for the remainder of this year. And we started talking about the art walk and trying to figure out the date for next year. We have had a couple of inquiries, um, one being from an artist who wants to participate. Another was from the woman who was organizing the run at Capitol Brewery because she's trying to pick the opposite week of what we select. Um, I know last at our last meeting, you guys said that you would prefer to avoid um, commencement for UW. And I think Matt said that that is May 12th. Let me just quick check here. The 13th, probably 13th. same as Mother's Day weekend. Yes. Um, he thought that we should maybe aim for May 6th, but I wasn't sure if you guys would want to go that early in the month just because of it being outdoors and concern yeah. for it being too cold. Um, I think, I mean, the 20th of May would be my vote. And I'd also just like to throw out there from conversations with all the other artists and what like Art Fair on the Square did last year when they moved it to fall. Artists love that idea. Like there's not, there's really not a lot happening in early September. So just a thought, it's still, you know, fair weather on the 9th or 16th of September. And I also didn't know if we wanted to keep it one day or if we wanted to consider a whole weekend too. I think this is my take on this. We had very little help last year in regard to, or this year in regard to volunteers and we cannot handle a two day event yet um, right now. I feel like we need to, we need to uh, kind of focus on consistency with the event too. I mean, I don't know if we need to necessarily keep it in May, but that's when it's been previously and uh, I don't know what everybody else's thoughts are about that, but I just think um, a two-day event is going to be a lot to manage. And if there's stu everybody's stuff is outside, how secure will it be? Um, and, you know, will we need additional insurance if people are storing their stuff outside? Um, I just, that's my take on it. I don't know what everyone else thinks, but it was a lot of work and we did not have a lot of volunteers. And um, I just worry that we, we don't wanna bite off more than we can chew because we're just starting to build this. I don't know, what do the rest of you think um, about the art walk? I'm fine with May 20th. I don't think it needs to be the 12th, um, but I do agree that that's May 6th is a little bit early. It could be really rainy and thunderstormy. Yeah, and we don't have to make a decision, you know, this year for two days or not. I just, the only reason I mentioned it is that we received so much feedback of like artists traveling from farther away. We could have a lot more artists participating to consider it for the future. Again, not necessarily for this year. Um, and you probably have to get a lot more volunteers when you're drawing in a lot I more do feel like too. we could extend the hours maybe later into the evening. Um, you know, we ended at four, right? So maybe we could extend it to six or um, because 10, 10 to four is a pretty short window, um, I think, for artists to be selling their stuff. I don't yeah. know. Do you think, how do you feel about expanding hours? I think that's good because if we're doing the same location, then you actually have the crowd going to Capitol Brewery that, you know, would pick up in another round of traffic, so. And people loved that venue. Like people are still telling me how much they loved the art walk. And when, you know, when I'm out in public and I'm like, I, I, it was just really by accident that we ended up with that spot too. So um, yeah, I think, I think we should keep it where it's at for sure. 
Hey, Will it be a problem closing the street for longer, Abby? I don't think it would be a problem extending the closure for two hours. I do think if we went to a two day event, that would be challenging because then we would be blocking access to a bunch of people's homes for that whole period. Mm -hmm. Hey, Erin, do you have a way to like cross reference other art fair schedules like in your networks? Can you just like look up dates so that's not on the same weekend as another art fair in the area? Okay, it's not too hard to do that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that might be a good starting spot because if there's another art fair on May 20th or whatever that day was, then. Yeah, work. there's usually not much in May or September because I mean, for the reasons we already mentioned, like they don't wanna have to deal with the weather complications. I was at one in St. Paul in early mid-May ones that was just, terrible like I watched so many people's art just get blown away smashed like for insurance reasons and participation they tend to stay away from those so but yeah I will do a quick cross check here for you thank, thank you. you um Matt did try to search that himself and he said he didn't find really much of anything happening before May 27th um, yeah. for area art fairs, but he probably isn't plugged into the same networks that you are, Aaron. So if you want to, even if you had like a Facebook group or something, you could throw the date out and see if they know of any conflicts, throw out May 20th. Yeah, any national or state or local ones would be on here. And I got May 6th and May 27th, but there's nothing no surprise for Mother's Day weekend, and there is nothing the weekend of the 20th and 21st as of now, so. Maybe we tentatively then pick May 20th, since that seems to be an agreeable date. I do think we should get our subcommittee formed and start meeting right away. Um, you know, when I worked on the Grantwood Art Festival, we would literally start meeting the next month for the following year. And I think that we should start earlier. <laughs> No, we should, and that way we could get it on artist radars more, you know, for any of these fall shows that happen to get dates and information out there, that would be great. Yeah, and we'll be able to hit some of the deadlines too that we, we may not have made last year for advertising and stuff. Sounds good. So right. Michelle and Aaron for the subcommittee. Yes, I'll be on the subcommittee. Yeah, I can help again. I will um, introduce you to Matt via email. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Do we need to vote on that, Abby, since we're picking a date or is that just discussion or just? Sounds like it's still tentative, but we'll, I, I think I'll go ahead and communicate to the woman who's organizing the run and I'll tell her that that's our tentative date, if that's okay with you guys. Yeah, that's fine. So I don't think we need to vote, but I'll include in the minutes that that was the selected tentative date. Okay. All right, so then let's move to number four, which is summer fun, as Erin just mentioned. Summer fun. Um, so Rebecca Price just touched base with me yesterday on this. Um, they'd like to kind of get some stuff out there whether it's you know social media or on the website so that people know what's happening each day. So if anyone has any great ideas for art crafting, either for little kids or big kids, let me know. Otherwise, my goal is to try to figure out some options over the weekend so that she can have that um, uh, settled for next week. So the summer fun dates are Monday, Wednesdays, and it's just the 15th of August, 17th, 22nd, and 24th from 9 to 11 at Lakeview. I would love to get one or two volunteers for each of those. Um, to my surprise, Rebecca did tell me that she actually has city staff allocated to help with those events for setup and takedown, which I was shocked by and thrilled by at the same time. Um, so, you know, making sure all the tables, chairs are set up so that we don't have to cart all that stuff out. Meg knows how much fun that was trying to roll those giant tables. 
<laughs> under the rack. So that will be awesome, um, both for setup and takedown. But it would be great just to have an extra one or two sets of hands on each date too, just for circling around, you know, when someone's out of glue, someone needs help doing stuff. A lot of times the kids, you know, especially if a parent is there with multiple kids, they kind of get stranded on a project when mom has to take the baby to the bathroom. So it's just nice to have people circling around to help. No specific art experience is required. Um, if anyone would like to help lead one of them, I would be all for it. I definitely don't need to need, I just gave her basically the dates I knew I could commit to leading when this went to publication. So if anyone else would love to lead, I would be all for it. Um, the only day I know that might be problematic for me is Monday the 22nd when there's our daycare is closed that day. I don't really want to bring all four kids there. Hopefully my husband can take off the morning. Um, but other than that, um, as both Meg and I have done, I think some others here, you know, you can bring your older kids with you. I tend to bring my two older ones with too. Um, I'm hoping to have at least one of these be an architecture exposure one, as I mentioned earlier with some of my coworkers to kind of hit the middle school age crowd. But then we'll also have like the very simple crafts like we did down on the green last year where it's a, you know, like a firecracker with pipe cleaners, you know, stuff that little kids can just play and do and glitter glue up the whole thing. So um, that's where we're at with that. I think I can send out an email and get volunteers. I just picked up supplies left over from Solarbration from Julia today. So I'm just going to assess pretty much what we have and what we would need to buy with the $500 I think that we approved a couple of months back. I definitely don't think we'll need all of it. So um, yeah, that's where we're at for that. Does anyone have any questions about it? Um, I do have some leftover tempera paint and I have paint brushes from the middle school art project if you need tempera paint for any of your projects. Okay, um, nice. I also have a bunch of four by four white tiles Oh, that would be fun. Tiles that I'm trying to get rid of that were left behind by my, our old, the old, old owner of our house. So um, let mean, me know if you want any of those things and I'll leave them in City Hall. Okay. Can... Yeah, I would love all of that. Okay. Um, and then to piggyback on those summer dates, also in discussion with Rebecca, there's, as Abby mentioned, the changeover with um, kind of the part time downtown person now so for what we did last year with um the not so scary halloween event where we just did a little halloween crafts at lakeview and then for the um tree lighting we'd add little like christmas ornaments and things so that's kind of being taken over but there's two other options where we could jump in not to say that we can't participate in those two but as far as city parks and rec is concerned um, looking at something on October 17th, which is a Monday, Middleton Cross Plain schools are out, which might be actually a better turnout since Middleton has that long weekend for Halloween. I feel like a lot of people probably take a little vacation or go see relatives. So I was thinking something cool, you know, even if it's just like painting and decorating pumpkins prior to Halloween there. And then the other one is... Where did it go? The Santa Parade and Candy Cane Hunt, which is also the 17th, but in December. That's a Saturday. So maybe doing something that ornaments were a big hit. I would just say we need to prepackage every single one this time because it was just, it was pure chaos when people arrived. And it was like 200 kids in 15 minutes. And it's just nicer to hand them a prepackaged thing that they can sit down or take home. So. Um, but I will add those to my email and anyone who would like to volunteer would be much appreciated and feel free to send me any ideas you have. All right. Any questions or comments about summer fun? Just a quick idea on the Halloween, um, because we are also having a Halloween event downtown and it's like a couple weeks later, you could maybe think about like come and decorate your pumpkin and then it'll be on display in a couple weeks at the other thing which would help get 
people downtown and I don't know, we could maybe even have like a voting thing or oh, open yeah. the scariest or the funniest. I don't know. Just an that idea. would be cool. No, I like that. That'd be really cool. All right. Anybody else? Okay. So we will look for your email then, Aaron. Um, and our next item, 2023 budget request. All right. So for um, those of you all who have joined the committee more recently, um, the committee has uh, two, well, the city in general has two sources of um, budget options. One is the annual operating budget. And for the arts committee, that is $5,000 per year. Um, it is intended not for large scale projects that um, last for five plus years, but for smaller expenses like the costs associated with holding an event or having summer fun, um, arts tables, things like that. Um, and the downside of an operating budget request is that at the end of the year, it doesn't roll over. Um, the second type of um, funding that the Arts Committee has secured is through the capital budget, and that's through capital borrowing. So it really is intended for larger projects that last many years, um, five plus years. And for the capital budget, we have uh, one project that is arts committee led that's underway right now, and that is the utility box art project. And the arts committee put in a capital budget request for that during the budget cycle last year and was able to secure $20,000 in funding, $10,000 from capital funds and $10,000 from the TIF district because it happened that about half of the boxes that we were proposing to wrap with um, artwork were within a TIF district. And so that $20,000 um, line item has not yet been touched. We have not incurred any costs for that project yet, but I'm still hopeful that we can try to get this completed by the end of this year. Um, I sent you all an email on it. I know a couple of you have re responded to that. Um, but for those of you who did not submit a competitive proposal for the utility box project, you can uh, reply to my email and let me know which options are your favorite. I sent out a link that had all of the choices and they were numbered. Um, we are also asking the CDA or the Community Development Authority, which I staff and they focus primarily on the downtown area. We're asking them to do that same exercise so that we can come to the meeting, the CDA meeting in early August and have at least a sense of um, you know, some of the preferred options for that and it'll help make the meeting go a little bit more smoothly. So I'm hoping that we'll spend that fun, those funds by the end of this year, but it's possible that we'll have to request that they be rolled over if we're not able to get the, the utility wraps installed this year due to like weather or whatever factors. Um, so, and then the, the other project right now that I'm working on that has an arts component is the Stonehorse Green, which is the downtown green space that's under construction right now. Um, that project has about $150,000 in sculpture. Um, so all of the artwork that's included in that project is being designed and installed by actual size artworks out of Stoughton. Um, the budget requests for 2023 are due the day after our next arts committee meeting. Oh. So I wanted, you only have like two meetings to consider um, if there are any projects that you wanted to submit. Otherwise, I would just be putting in your regular operating budget request for $5,000 next year. Um, one thing I would note is that I don't think it would be a good strategy to request funding for more utility box wraps next year. And that's just because we haven't really proven yet the concept. And I think if if those were installed and they were looking great, and we were getting good feedback, then that would be a good ask to try to get more funding to do those next year. But since we haven't installed them yet, I think it would be a hard sell. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there and um, see if you all had any ideas. What about the Middleton sign that you've been wanting to do? Yes, Middleton sign. <laughs> I think that would be a great project for next year. 
And um, the benefit of that is I think that that probably would be eligible for TIF funding because it would be a downtown project. What is that? Let me see if I can pull up a picture of it. I tried getting on my VPN before this meeting and I wasn't able to, but let me see if it's working now. Then I can get to my file. Like the Hollywood sign, but Middleton. Whoa. Yeah. We have we have the, the letters, letters or the the we have Middleton, the letters that spell Middleton from yeah. the old Middleton Center. And Abby's really been wanting to Whoa. get the project underway to install them on the hill by the skate park. Is that correct? Oh. The skate park? Yes, that was uh, the, yeah, that's what I was thinking, but um we could install them wherever. They've been in storage at our recycling center for well, ever since they demolished the old Middleton Center building yeah. and took the signs down and I saved them and put them at the recycling center, they've been there yeah. four years now for a long time. Abby. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica, where, there, Abby? Do you know where Long Table Anyone is? Anyone checked on them? The, yeah. That um, used to be a whole area called the old Middleton Center and they had neon signs on the roof so you could see it from the belt line and it just cool. said old Middleton Center. And so Abby just saved the Middleton part. And I think it would be super cool if we could get it going. Yeah. I think that's we the perfect spot up on that slope where nothing else is going on. Like nothing's gonna be developed there. It's, and it will be more reminiscent of the Hollywood sign too, which is also up on a hill. Yeah, <laughs> I love and that great. idea. Great reuse of materials. Silly me thought they put the same letters back up when the new development went in, but oh. no, brand new. <laughs> um, well, now we've got them. So <laughs> one other thing I can think of, Abby, that I actually just popped into my head earlier today and I messaged you the whole storm drain projects. I really I think that's super cool. I would love to see some in our neighborhoods here. I would volunteer to paint it myself at no cost. Is that a Dama project, Abby, the storm drains? Obviously, they need a certain type We're of paint. asking Abby questions while she's trying to concentrate. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was Dama um, that did those. And we have had them come out one time to refresh them. Here it is. Oh, okay. Let's see. Can so you tell get on the people who are newer what Dama is? Dama is Dane Arts Mural Arts. It's a nonprofit organization that um, does primarily murals on buildings where they paint on polytab. They work with students to help design the mural and to help paint the mural, but then they have a professional artist go over and refresh the piece so that it looks like it was all painted with one hand instead of many. <laughs> the storm drain project brings is to bring awareness to the water table and the water system and, you know, like not polluting the water and conserving it. And there's one downtown, um, but there's uh, one on Parmenter right by the like gallery. Mm -hmm. um right after the yeah. fire station it's yeah. just cool like my kids just love seeing them you know when we're out biking or walking around just adds a lot yeah Thank it's you. actually kind of tricky to find um the drains that have concrete adjacent to them I was the person that had to go around and like scout locations because usually the drains are adjacent to the curb and then to the terrace which almost always is grass but you need to find one that has concrete above okay um but yeah i i think we could definitely do that i actually don't think that that would qualify for capital budget because they don't last they only last like two or three years um oh. without having to repaint but we could use our operating funds to pay for it i think And this is the, you can't really get a good view, I'm sorry, but this is the Middleton, the old Middleton sign that we took down. And those letters are like six feet tall. Actually, Whoa. they're probably more like 
they're four to six feet tall, I would say. Okay. They're very big. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. Triangular Can door was really, really interested in doing that project because he saw him at the recycling center with me. Oh, <laughs> so they were still there when you guys were there. That's good. Yeah. And <laughs> actually, I forgot to tell you, but since I thought about it right now, I'll just tell you now that the Dama mural on the salt shed has some damage on it that we're going to have to figure out. Like, I don't know if they're air pockets or water pockets, but there's a bunch of raised areas. Have you been there lately? Oh, I have not noticed that. No. Okay. I'll send you pictures. We can figure out maintenance for that. Oh, it's no. Bubbling or? Yeah. All over the place. Like large, large bubble. Oh. <clears throat> um, maybe we could ask Megan. Megan will be here soon to start working on the self-made man. Maybe we could ask her to run by and see if she has any thoughts I mean we should ask Dama as well but yeah yeah it might be something that you could just like poke a little pinprick in it and release I don't know I don't know how it's adhered behind it but um, I'll send you pictures separately but that just got me thinking about it so then I was like I wonder if those letters are still at the recycling center I hope nobody took them <laughs> they were sought after everyone wants them <laughs> I we still have the same coordinators working out there so I don't think that anybody would have been able to take them <laughs> um so yeah I think it, uh for the Middleton sign though would like how are you going to if we put it in the budget how would you say how much we needed would you get a re request first to find out how much it would cost um that's a good question are we gonna have an artist paint it or what are we thinking for design are we going to have the letters wrapped Can um so i was thinking that we would just put it out there as a call for artists and we would just let people decide what they wanted to propose but i would say that if we have any desire to have it electrified and lit that will cost a whole heck of a lot more money because we would have to run power to it there would not be any power up there the other thing is we're going to need to make sure that it's safe and secure and meets all of the city's standards i can talk to the building inspector about that the neon's oh, gone, though, right it, it's just the it's just the letter with the neon without the neon it's like the whole channel box with like all the inner workings and everything it's not neon it's um I'm not sure what type of light bulb you put inside of it. And most, mostly the reason why they decided to build a new sign instead of using the old one is because it's inefficient and it was cheaper for them to get a new one that would function properly than to try to restore the old one. Right, like they're individual bulbs, right? Like I think easy so. to damage, yeah. You have to I go guess. up there and change them on the roof yeah. and then they go out. It, it would be neat to light it up, but I feel like just, you know, looking back to like parks and rec concerns, like the tendency for damage and temptation for teenagers, you know, like the lighting it up, I think might be more trouble than it's worth. Mm -hmm. I think leave it as a cool Instagrammable also place. <laughs> And maybe so, the artists will have some idea for integrating those old light bulbs into their art. I have a question. Would the artist paint the letters and then it would get installed on the hill afterwards or wrap or whatever they're going to do with the letters? So they would do it down like on like level and then somebody would go install it and that wouldn't be the artist, correct? It would be the city crew or who would be installing it? <laughs> I don't think it would be the city crew. <laughs> it's um, a really, really steep hill. I mean, I think it would look cool, but like, I wouldn't want to be up there. I think we would have to have it professionally installed. I don't think, I mean. Do we know who would do something like that? Like, I don't even know who you'd contact. Well, I mean, for erosion and everything, you'd have to put like footings in and everything, right? Like, I would think, I thinking. wonder if um, PKK lighting that, does our they do some work for us in the downtown they're the ones that like change out the uh, the banners up on the poles they change out like the lit de decor that we put on the 
street lights. They installed the lighting that we put in the stone horse green temporarily. I wonder if they would be able to do it. I would almost ask a structural engineer for reference because not to knock PK at all, but remember my husband commented at the downtown events last year about <laughs> the lack of stability and installation of the lighting there. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, don't tell me that. <laughs> it's, I just, I don't know the weight of those letters, I guess. You'd, I think, I don't know. I can easily ask one of our structural engineers just for a opinion on it if we want to consider that for like budgetary reasons. Yeah, I know that we're like, talking I think it's a good starting spot to like find out funds because that can right. be really expensive. Because the other thing is like city liability, right? Like even if you put a sign that says don't climb on the letters, you know people are gonna climb on the letters. So you have to assume. I don't think anybody will climb up there. Meg is right. That hit eh. that is really steep. <laughs> Tell yeah, me I don't know. know. <laughs> I got a couple of kids in this house that might prove you wrong. <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, for liability, I think you need to plan on someone deciding to climb on a letter. I guess like now that we're talking this through more, so if we're for sure, no, we don't want it lit. It seems like if we are going to hire a professional like Michelle suggested to install it, then it would be much easier to determine the budget because we could we could reach out to people and get a cost for installing it. And then we could just decide on our own what would be an appropriate artist fee and um, you know, material cost to put out a call for artists. Yeah, so I think that's like, a good way to go. Now, tell me again when we have to decide this. Um, well, we, our budget requests are due on the day after our next arts committee meeting. Okay. okay. So that gives us a month to less than a month to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could ask, um, I could probably ask Matt to run with this. Oh, that's a good idea. Good idea. <laughs> Mm -hmm. hey, I think you would be already. really excited about this project actually if you would yeah. dig this okay yeah and I mean I know just for personal connections if we have access to the recycling center I could easily have mp squared structural engineering down there just to give us you know their opinion and estimate that would be uh, I'm pretty sure you still have to bid that out though right we couldn't just select someone if it's over $25,000. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think it'd be over that. It's based on the work we do with them. I believe that that's the cutoff. Okay. I'm not 100% sure. It's different for professional services than for construction. And I don't usually get involved with the construction part. Okay. So we'll, I can check though. Okay. What do you guys think about an alternative? Would you be into doing like another mural project as an alternative or what do you think is an alternative to the Middleton sign if we discover after a couple of weeks of investigation that we can't do the Middleton sign? I would be up for a mural as long as it was somewhere that would stay for a while. Is well, it, it kind of breaks to be part of the capital budget. Um, the Roman candle looks like it's lasting pretty well. Yeah, that building might go though in the near future. So, really, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's well, it's a long story, but my business partner, it's something he's been talking to the owner for for a while because we used to be in the building next door to that. Mm -hmm. So, Abby knows the backstory. But, okay. anyways, <laughs> so. Well, it is know. holding up though. The mural. Yeah, oh no, it looks great. And it would make me really sad if it came down, but yeah. I'm not allowed to have that opinion. Um, I think it'd be great to do something that would involve kids and youth that would be a mural somewhere. Like, I can't think of somewhere off the top of my head, but is there any opportunity when Stonehorse Green is finished to do a mural there? Where? Stonehorse Green, like I know Village Green wanted nothing to do with anyone doing murals on the side of their building, but. Mm -hmm. Unfortunate. I would prefer 
to not touch the stone ice cream. I'm a little territorial <laughs> about it because I'm like, it was so like thoughtfully designed that I'm like, even picking the benches, I'm at reaching out to the architects to have them do that because I'm so nervous about messing it up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just want to let it sit. Once it's constructed, like I feel like it, sh it needs to hang for a while before we change anything. No, nope, totally get it. Well, we talked about those panels outside the senior center a while back. Yeah, we kind of that's determined good. that that was like really hard to figure out with the light on there. But I thought we decided that it wasn't paintable. We looked at like this. But Michelle wanted to wrap it. Oh, yeah, okay. you could consider that. Yeah, it was the material. Yeah, that it would be too hard to paint because it would need to be replaced. I thought we said like every year or two. But you could do a call for artists to like wrap it. it. That would work. I'm not sure that's worth it. Personally. We could yeah, do another, we could do some other type of visual installation there too, because you know, you had the, um, maybe we could get ETC involved and do some kind of um, permanent light outdoor theater project thing again. Yeah, Julia has her hand up. Julia, you have the floor. Um, yes, yeah, so I was just kind of um, wondering, do any of the um, Pheasant Branch um, Conservancy trails have any artwork? So I was just kind of running at one earlier. And I'm like, oh, it'd be kind of nice if there was some artwork like like along the way, like on some of the bridges that they have, or they have some like, you know, like when you get to the end of the trail and then you get to like the next point, like if there's like artwork at like entrances or exits of some of those trails. I don't know if there is any of those. I've only been to a few. Um, and then the next thing I was thinking is like kind of something like um, like the community pool or like a tennis court. Like there's like there's a lot of people there like this time of year. It, it would be kind of nice, like, you know, especially a lot of kids. So like it would be kind of cool if like, something like that was in those areas. Um, but I know like those things will kind of like slow down once it gets a little bit colder. So um, yeah. I didn't like I was at the Bowman Center. I'm like, I don't really think there's a whole lot of artwork around there. So um, that was just kind of an idea. And it's by the school too. So no, I think that's a great idea. And it actually reminds me of something that Steve Cohen, I think everyone knows who Steve Cohen is, um, actually mentioned to me a few weeks ago about, you know, back where his building is and wanting to do something on the trail out there and you know because he'd love a good view of his <laughs> office window there but I'm like it you know brought up the same point as Julia is mentioning where there's really not a lot out there it'd be great to have kind of a little something and waypoints um also along the lines of what Julia was mentioning um I received a call in a couple weeks ago and it was from a guy who just wanted to propose an idea he had for a public art project and it was to do some kind of artwork on the entirety of the um, water tower that's up in Pheasant Branch, like off of Highland Way. And I was like, oh, I love that idea. You would have the most beautiful backdrop. That would be really cool. But anyway, as we got talking, he told me that he works for Coda Works. And I don't know if you guys remember, but a long time ago, most of you weren't even on the committee, but we had the executive director of Coda Works come and talk to our committee. And they help like larger arts organizations do RFPs and things like that. Um, and he lives here in Middleton and he seemed familiar with some grants that he thought we might be eligible for. Um, but anyway, I sent him a committee application form and told him he should consider applying to join our committee because it sounded like he was really knowledgeable and enthusiastic well I like Julia's pheasant branch idea and I what if we kind of played on the prairie and did an installation that was like metal flowers or um you know something when I was in beaver dam I know that Abby and I talked about this they had these they have these metal flowers in this um sculpture garden that are also musical instruments and they have mallets that are attached to them, but they, you know, they look like flowers. Maybe we could do something at Pheasant Branch and just kind of, you know, it wouldn't have to be metal flowers, but something to play off of the prairie theme and the natural surroundings. 
because I think if we did something with pheasant branch, they would maybe want us to, it, they would want it to blend in with the landscape, right? They'd want it to fit. Yeah. I don't know. There was an art exhibit there a couple of years ago. I think I saw pictures of them and they were pretty bright pieces. I mean, they were only there for a month or something like that, but it was really cool. And I think the students did it, right, Abby? It was like a student art project and they were like yeah. these amazingly bright pieces and they were kind of like set off into the woods. So you're like on the path, you can view it. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can find those pictures and email them out. Um, I was kind of thinking like, um, maybe like either painted uh, like bird houses or like, um, I don't know what they're called, but they're like the kinds that like are for bees, like painted like bee homes. I don't know what they're called, but um, yeah. like I, so I, I used to live in um, Massachusetts and they had a lot of marshland and they would have like those like really far back bird houses, but they weren't super decorative or anything like that. But I, get, I can imagine you even have like kids paint those like something simple um, and maybe that would be like i don't know if that would be like um, appropriate for like a nature trail but like i know like marshlands would have bird houses yeah that might be something we could reach out to like public lands on and just see what options are because obviously there's certain areas that are restoration that we wouldn't you know be able to touch at all but i think we would definitely want to talk to um friends of pheasant branch and see if they're even receptive to that idea um yeah and i mean there's waypoints too right there's like orchid heights park that we could talk to matt you know about possibilities there too along or the lake trail view. Mm -hmm. around somewhere you know we could do something or easy yeah for easy park yeah there's a lot of options if we were going to do an outdoor park installation we probably need to look at our uh, master plan. Yes, that's a good idea. <laughs> we, um, okay, wait, who's the new guy that just started? Matt? Matt. Yeah. Matt. Okay, could we have him like draft up a list of like the, the projects that we have on there? And I don't know, we only have a month. That's the only problem though. Well, wait, like why would you just not look at it? Why do you, what, what would, um, because yeah, I guess you could just look at it. Okay. I can pull it up right now if you want. Okay. I just feel like we're getting off subject because I'm not even sure that these things are on the master plan that was approved. Yeah. Okay. I mean, they're great ideas, but like. <laughs> Maybe we do what we've done in the past and send out our top three ideas or send out the ideas and then we pick the top three or whatever. And then we discuss it as we come back, come back and discuss it be for next time. Um. Will we be able to discuss it for next time? It sounds like we need to know. Well, we, yeah. need, we need to be pretty well set. I mean, we'll have to vote on it next time, but we can certainly vote. You know, we can certainly send out ideas and then compile ideas via email and then. Do we want to get a read on the whole feasibility of the Middleton sign first? Yeah. And communicate by email. And then if it comes to having to do this, then we kind of branch in there. I don't want to create a bunch of extra work for Abby in the process. So no, I think we start with the Middleton sign and and maybe have Matt get that taken care of as quickly as possible, like the fact finding, and then um, if that's going to be a no go, then we move on and talk about these other things. But I do agree that it should come off of our master plan and the things that we've been had on the on the board for a while. Um, we do. Um, I know we're talking about capital budget here, but our revolving budget, do you, Abby, will we be able to spend that on Art Walk next year? Yes, I think so easily because what I did this year is I just pushed all the Art Walk expenses to the operating fund before tapping into the non-lapsing fund and we have maxed out the 5,000 now. I'm so going to now are going to the non lapsing. I'd really like us to I would really like us to ask for more from the city because they have not upped our budget for a while and I really would like to see more commitment from the city um, and less reliance on getting donations I I, I feel like we should be able to fund more of the art walk next year. 
I would agree for everything that the mayor preaches about wanting us to do with art around the city. I feel like you've got to kind of commit to those words because yes, I agree. My grand is pretty absurd when he wants statues outside city hall. So, right. And he's always approaching me and wanting us to do something. And, um, you know, so I feel like that's true. And we have things pop up too when people want to partner with us unexpectedly. Oh, yeah. Like the mural is a perfect example. Um, so I feel like we need to ask for more than 5,000. So you're saying instead of asking for something on the capital budget that we would. Oh, ask. we need to do both. I'm talking, I've gone back to the general budget now. And I'm talking about just the general budget, and we're getting 5,000 now. Like Aaron said, Gurdip was always wanting to uh, us to do projects and we don't often have the money. And I just feel like the city needs to commit more money to our general fund. Plus we can use it for the art walk and make the art walk bigger and better. Yeah. But and that's the general fund and that's separate from the capital fund. And so that's what we're talking about with the yeah. sign. How much do you want to ask for from the operating fund? I think at least 7,500. Since they haven't upped it in a while, I don't think that it's unreasonable to ask for another 2,500. Yeah, I guess Abby would know the numbers better than us. I would go kind of slow and steady with the increases, but I don't know. I would yeah. like to say, let's ask for 10, but I don't think we'll get it. Probably not. <laughs> so, do all the other committees get the same amount? Everyone gets five thousand, or no other committees have budgets except for um, the Landmarks Commission has four hundred dollars. <laughs> but most of the committee don't—they're <laughs> not—they operate very differently than the Arts Committee. Yeah, <laughs> they have—you know—they have, you know, have full-time staff, and yeah, yeah, they're not running and organizing like things yes. they're making decisions and recommendations but they're not like I don't know I, it's hard to explain but they're just they're operating very differently now right. the CDA the community development authority they have their own separate enterprise fund it's it was originally funded by um the city through a sale of property, but they operate separately and independently now. Um, and they have, they, they probably have, I think around $750,000 in their um, pool of money and they own assets and um, make- Let's ask for that, 750,000. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it operates very differently. But other than that, I mean, the other committees that I staff, they don't have a budget at all. So okay. let me ask you this. If we ask for 7,500, is it an all or nothing thing or do they like actually negotiate when you come to vote on it? They, um, so they put in all the decision items and they have like a maximum amount that they are able to go to because under the state levy cap, we can't raise, um, we can't raise taxes over the net new construction value, which does not factor in inflation. And that is why the city is looking to go to a referendum because we haven't been able to add any new staff positions in, well, probably since about 10 years ago, um, but our city has grown. And so the city is looking to have a referendum in the fall to see if we can maybe get um, some new positions funded, as well as cover some other holes that we're going to have in the budget this year. Okay. It might not be a great year to ask for it. Because the school's <laughs> doing a referendum too. Yeah, the school's doing, I think, a $25 million referendum. I think and the question, though, is will we still get the 5000 yeah. if we ask for 7500 Yes, you okay. will. So let's You're go for it. We got head. nothing to lose, right? They'll say if they say no to seventy five hundred, we'll still get our five thousand. So <laughs> I, I don't see any harm in asking. It's going to probably it's, cause a lot of work for Abby. No, it won't. Um, there is one thing that I could maybe I I've been needing to go and look at some of our fees that we charge in our department, 
and see if we, there might be some room to increase some of the fees. Um, so if I'm able to come up with some funds there too, it might help make the case. Okay, so in the interest of time, I'm going to propose that we ask for 7,500 for the general budget and that we proceed onward with the Middleton sign with the thoughts in the thought in the back of our minds that we are going to have to come up with an alternative um, because we're going we've been going down kind of a rabbit hole here so um, I'm going to swing us back around I'm going to pull us out of the rabbit hole now um, and I think that uh, I don't know do we need we don't need to vote on this tonight do we Abby we're just you can, you can vote it at your next meeting yeah. okay is everyone okay with like um, proposing alternative ideas to Abby if we find out that we cannot afford the Middleton sign and then moving forward quick kind of quickly and maybe even having an emergency meeting if we have to in between? Because yeah. I think until we know about the Middleton sign, we're just gonna keep kind of spinning our wheels on where we're going. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's good. Well, if you're all in favor of that, then uh, I that's what I think we should do. I mean, we could probably go ahead and vote on whether or not we want to ask for seventy five hundred dollars for the from the general budget, or we can handle them together next week. Okay, so shall we leave it at that then and move on to the next agenda item? Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we're back to utility boxes and Abby kind of gave a little bit of an update. Yep. Um, so hopefully the CDA will make a selection in early August. It's actually the second Thursdays they're meeting. Um, Are we allowed to watch or can we not be on that meeting? Um, <laughs> You're allowed to come with me if you want. I'll be at that meeting. So if you guys, one of you wants to come, and not those of you, of course, that have sub submitted entries. So if I, I can't, can't. Oh, okay. I guess that I means no you, to you, Meg. <laughs> you could come. Can't to talk. Listen, <laughs> but you would probably want to keep your camera off and you would not want to in any way participate in the discussion. Okay. It's online, not in person. It will be on Zoom, yeah. Okay. When did you want the rest of us to respond? What was the date that you need the responses with the, the top 10 picks? By the end of this month. Okay. So I have not done that yet, but I will get on it. Okay. And Brian, um, you left me a voicemail and you said that you had sent me your picks, but I went and looked in my email and my junk mail and I couldn't find it. Did oh, you mail God. it or oh. did you email it? <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's at the post office. No, <laughs> I emailed it to you, but like, yeah, I, I did it. So whatever, I, I've got them. I'll get them back to you. You get Okay. Well, I'm sorry yeah. I haven't returned your voicemail yet. <laughs> yeah, Abby, yours does kick back, though, after a certain file size, Brian. So you might need to reduce. Well, all, no, the the only thing that I sent, we just sent the numbers. Right? Oh, huh. You, you, you had them numbered, so I, ju I just sent you a short email that said the my picks for this are you know 8 15 21 32 in order that's that's what you're looking for right yep yeah and i sent i just sent it as a link um so it didn't have a big have big attachment or anything okay well i i have it here i'll get it to you okay and i maybe i'll look again but i was like well he says he sent it i searched my email then i went to my junk and i couldn't find it so anyway i'll look again gosh i'm shocked but okay no, I mean I, that I can't that I can't do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> I have them here. I'll get them to you. Thanks, Brian. Do you have anything else you want to add to that, Abby? Nope. Okay. So let's move on then to funding opportunities, which we always push off at the end. I know. Um, and then we never get to it. So I'm going to propose that this gets put up at like number two next time. <laughs> yeah, I would love to see, well, 
um, like we do need to discuss percent for arts because there was a lot of work that was done on that. And then we just yeah. let, let it kind of fall to the way. We need to follow that through. And I, I do also think we need to, to talk about the donation button because there are people that have asked me how they can donate to the arts committee. And mm -hmm. so if we had a link for them, that would be great. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm thinking about it, I, we could put some of those roundabout funds towards the Middleton sign. I don't think it'd be enough to pay for all of it, but it might pay for like the footings. That's a good idea. Structural stuff. Good thinking, Meg. Or it might pay for a couple letters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how much it's gonna be. <laughs> That's a good idea because then you could reduce the amount you're asking for, which will would show that the arts committee is, you know, doing some work, some leg work to get funds as well. Mm -hmm. That'd be good. All right, so shall we um, have Abby move that higher on the agenda next time so that we actually get a chance to discuss it? Happy to do it. All right. Okay, everybody, anything else that you guys wanna comment on on any of these items that we discussed? No, do we have someone who wants to move to adjourn? This is Katie, I'll move that we adjourn. This is Aaron, I will second. All right, all in favor. Aye. 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 All right, thanks everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you.